episode 152 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg. My co-host, Warren Sklar, is back from Vegas. How you doing, Warren? Oh, yeah. I wasn't here last week, too. I, I'm trying to put the pieces back together. Yeah. I'm good. Oh, yeah. You know, after four nights in Vegas, you kind of forget where you are. This is true. Um, Vegas was fun. We had a great time. It's a celebration of the 50th uh, year of my life, which is tomorrow, uh, which is coming up tomorrow. Yeah. So Happy birthday. Today's the last day, the last day in, uh, in my forties and half a decade. I'm decade? already there. We're both Century. It's the of both. <laughs> Mr. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jeff Hammond is back on the show. How are you doing, Jeff? Glad to be Glad you're here. Uh, uh, thanks for having me back. It's great to get to hang out with you, Dave, and also to uh, to be on the show at the same time as uh, special guest Warren Sklar. Yeah, birthday b- birthday boy. So we didn't tell boy. you we 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 have to stay on this call until twelve oh one so we can celebrate my birthday. All right. So we we can't <laughs> sing Happy Birthday to you yet. You, you right. might be uh, you might be a little tired by that time. Four, <laughs> this is a four hour podcast, so. <laughs> We'll be fine. Oh. I've actually done that before, and it is rough. <laughs> it's tough. So, I can't get through an hour sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so we got some news here this week, and then uh, iOS fourteen point six hit hit the streets this past this 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 week. Actually, as we record this, and uh, uh, Warren and I have our new iPads. We're going to give you some reviews, and then we'll have insights from all of us. And uh, uh yeah there'll be lots of fun stuff to talk about like we always do always do so let's go jump into our news got a couple of news stories this week um speaking of zoom we were just talking about zoom that uh, when you hit the recording that uh, it actually announces that it's recording but uh, zoom actually added uh, a new support for the ipad pro's new center stage feature uh, the zoom app for the for ios was uh, uh, updated to introduce that support for the ipad pro models the new ipad pro models and uh and new software that adds integration with the center stage feature, which if anybody doesn't know, as you move, it moves with you, and uh, which, which is cool. And uh, it was designed, uh, center stage was designed with third-party apps in mind, so Apple is going to have the API available, so you, uh, any, uh, any other developers who want to, to, to utilize that uh, can do it. I have not tried it as of yet, Um because uh, I haven't had a, a reason to have a Zoom call with my iPad, because generally I always do Zoom on my my Mac. So, um, uh, what do you think, Jeff? This is this is, I think this is going to be a game changer for for the iPad, the new iPad, anyway. I agree. I think it's awesome, and I think it's also a sign that, that Microsoft really needs to get on task with yeah, with do. Skype. I mean, here we are. Today's what Thursday, so two days. Past the uh, the fourteen point six release, and Zoom already has support for uh, yep. for center stage. Yeah, that doesn't look good for Microsoft. It doesn't. Um, although I was just watching a, a, an I Justine video, and she just, of course, she gets all the free stuff. Gets unboxing a, a new Surface Hub two S or whatever it was called. Uh, so. So Microsoft's doing something that they know they know where to get that social media influencer to talk about their products. But uh, yeah, they better get their act together. Well, yeah, but you know, hey, at least they're good at getting their message out. No, absolutely. That's, so well done, Microsoft. Absolutely. So, uh, so I assume uh, Warren, you haven't tried it yet because uh, don't have too many Zoom calls. First of all, I Justine is a little uh, H O E because she did <laughs> she she first you know was all Apple H-O-E everything or was H-O-T? Apple. <laughs> <laughs> both but first she did this whole you know she was only apple and all you know and all of a sudden i logged into best buy website there's i justine on the best buy website yeah. doing uh things there and now she's doing microsoft i mean she the girl CES just wants too. free <laughs> yeah, she, she just wants free stuff and you know mm-hmm. i wouldn't mind taking her place if that could ever happen but i'm not as pretty what do i think about the zoom thing um <laughs> i'm with you with the desktop uh I wish this came to the desktop because I'm generally doing yeah. these things on the desktop, um, you know, but it makes more sense on a mobile device on an iPad because you technically are moving around more from that than you would be a desktop or a laptop. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. Um, it should come to the desktop. It should come to uh, all the other platforms. I don't, I think they must have an API. Apple must have a developer API that allows this to happen. Uh, so I'm assuming all developers have the capability to do it. 
Yep. Um, so well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. Um, it may be, but uh, I don't have too many Zoom calls. I always have Teams calls for work, so uh, might be tough. But uh, well, we'll see. If we can find a way to do it. Uh, next story on the Mac rumors: uh, HomePod and HomePod Mini to gain support for Apple Music lossless audio in future software update. Hmm. HomePod and HomePod Mini will gain support for playing back Apple Music's lossless audio in a future software update, according to a recently newly published Apple support document. So that's official. Um, at, at launch, HomePod, HomePod, HomePod Mini, as we know, was not supporting it. We had quite a debate about this with lossless and Dolby Atmos, otherwise known as spatial audio, created an immersed 3D uh, uh, dimensional experience. Uh, in June, Apple offers the subscribers with so what will be coming up soon here is the lossless tier, which I can't wait. I was just in the music app and I see they already have the digital music and the little icon ready to go here, but I don't think it's playing just yet. Uh, but uh, despite support for Apple Music lossless and future software updates for the HomePod and HomePod Mini, the AirPods and AirPods Pro will not gain that support. Uh, in the support document, Apple explains the current Bluetooth doesn't support high quality, which we already knew that. It doesn't, it doesn't do that, but, uh, but uh, they do say the, the Lightning to 3.5-inch um, audio cable was designed to allow AirPods Max to connect to analog sources for listening to uh, music, m- movies and music, but the AirPod, AirPods Max can be connected to devices playing lossless and high-res lossless recordings with exceptional audio quality. However, given the analog to digital conversion in the cable, the playback will not be completely lossless. And Jeff, you did some uh, awesome uh, explainer video on your YouTube channel about lossless. What do you think about this whole crazy stuff? Well, uh, first, thanks for uh, for noticing the video. So yeah, uh, go, go you, Dave. Go you. Uh, okay, so not having lossless for AirPods totally makes sense. Yeah. I mean, as I said in my video, this is like trying to shove a sausage through a straw. You just don't have a big enough pipe for for the data to go over Bluetooth. Uh, now for the uh, for the AirPods or excuse yeah AirPods Max mm-hmm. the yeah it just seems like such a weird name AirPods Max because they're yeah. the big muff things that go over your ears. Um, anyhow, uh, wireless for lossless there seems like a problem. Uh, but what I would love to try is to get a hold of a pair of a set of AirPods Max, and then uh, can you actually plug in an, uh, other audio cables, or does it have to be just Apple's own cable for that connection? I would, it's a uh, it's a Lightning cable to yeah. it's a Lightning cable to uh, the, the um, headphone jack is what it is. So yeah. okay. I think that, that's it. That's it right there. Right. Oh, so that, that's all, that's what uh, what they're giving you. Yes, that's what they give you. In, that's what they give you in the phone. Right, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. and but we can totally work around that. That's not a problem. Um, what I'm wondering: can you put a regular headphone cable into AirPods Max and then plug it in uh, to? Uh, uh, that's, to we're going like the other one. So right. millimeter headphone connector. Yeah. So it's the same. So what I was saying is a Lightning cable. Like the AirPods. The AirPods uh, headphones charge, I think, with a lightning connector. I'm pretty sure. Unless it's not USB C, right? I don't think so. How do you charge it? I think it's lightning, right? I think it's lightning. That's good. Yeah, so I think there's a lightning. It's gotta be lightning to a headphone. So so if you can plug a regular headphone cable into there AirPods was the Max, Let's see. why <laughs> why wouldn't you be able to then plug that into a DAC and have uh, full uh, uh, hi-fi audio that way? Because the wired connection that's that's the magic key right there. And if you can bypass Apple's own DACs, which go twenty-four bit. Uh, 48 kilohertz. Is that right? Sounds about right. Yeah, they don't go up to 96, as I recall. So it'd be 24-bit 48 kilohertz for Apple's own DAX, which, I mean, which, honestly, you're, at that point, you're, you're beyond what human ears can hear anyhow. So th- there you go. That's, that's plenty good enough. 
Uh, and, and there are some audio files right now that are going, Jeff, what are you saying? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you can get a proper wired connection to AirPods Max, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to play high res audio because the headphones themselves aren't having to drive the audio a file. They're just simply playing what's being sent to them at that point. I would love to see this tested. I just don't have AirPods Max to try it myself. It looks like uh, uh, Warren just put it in our our private chat here. He uh, put a link for an Anchor 3.5 inch uh, male audio cable to Lightning connector. Um, so it looks like that's a true out cable as opposed to an adapter. Um, it's like, right, that's what it is. You plug one end into the um, into the headset, and you plug the other end into uh, a device that has a. Um, device that has a, a, a proper DAC in it. DAC, yeah. Yeah, a, a DAC or, or a headphone port. Like, from what I understand, like our Max with the headphone port will give us the uh, the lossless, right? If uh, Yeah, if tw- a 24 if bit, 48 kilohertz. And is that like any pair of headphones? Like any, any pair that's not wireless will give you that? Yeah, because at that point, it's not the headphones. It's it's the digital to audio converter in the phone that's that's handling that whole part for you. So then, if if you're not hearing parts of the audio through the headphones, that just means that they're headphones that that don't have a very wide dynamic range. But so crappy headphones, you're not going to hear good audio from them anyhow. It doesn't matter what kind of DAC you have. So uh-huh. yeah, so at that point. You know, yeah, if this cable, all it's doing is passing the the audio part and it's not doing any processing on the digital file, uh, then this, uh, this, who made that cable again? Uh, anchor. 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 Then yeah. this anchor cable, you should be able to plug it into to a digital to analog converter box and have that plugged into your, to your Mac, iPhone, or iPad. Yeah. And listen to high res audio, uh, depending on the DAC, up to twenty four bit one hundred ninety two kilohertz. Well, I, I'm, I'm gonna, just glad. I, go ahead. I'm just glad I didn't sell my HomePods because uh, I'm excited to see what that sounds like. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna be curious as well to see what the, that does sound yeah. like. Yeah. Um, because I thought for sure, as we've been talking about the last few weeks, is the HomePod is not going to be able to support it. But apparently it does. And then, and interestingly enough, Apple is still adding new features to the now retired HomePod. So, <laughs> so just going to be interesting to see where that goes. Uh, but we'll see here. You know, isn't, it, isn't it amazing, just real quick, isn't it amazing that they could broadcast wherever we're streaming Apple Music from over the internet and that is not where you're losing the quality of the audio the quality the quality of audio is being lost from like here to my ears you would think that they come up with a technology that could you know yeah but they do have a, a technology that will give you good uh audio quality over wireless and that's called wi-fi right <laughs> but so, yeah our headphones are bluetooth and uh that's not enough bandwidth. Yeah, I mean, so that's, Sonos I mean, that's limitation because of Bluetooth. I mean, it's it's just very difficult. Right. But, to... but like Sonos, so does you know Sonos before the the old system that streamed Wi-Fi, right? That's one of the first ones to do that, I think. Yeah, I mean, I got the Sonos it's, it's, Move behind me here, and that's that's over Wi-Fi, and I'm then and I'm right. done streaming music. So yeah, yeah, but the ones um, you know the old Sonos that um, um, had the controller. Uh, it didn't use Bluetooth. They didn't have Bluetooth at all. So I think it was that was the first Wi-Fi type system out there. Yeah. Uh, and I'm surprised more people aren't doing that. Yeah, it is surprising. So, all right. Well, that that's we had a, a bit of a debate here with the lossless, but I'm glad uh, I'm glad to see it uh, that 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 they're going to add support to the HomePod and like like Warren said and and, and Jeff well as well. I didn't and, debate a- Anxious to uh, to find out uh, how how well it sounds. So. Um, and the next two stories I just wanted to bring up, these are both related to the uh, Apple TV. Uh, first one is uh, in Mac rumors, uh, some new Apple TV 4K users are reporting 4K uh, content incorrectly labeled as HD. 
A number of new Apple TV 4K owners are reporting that TV shows and movies in several apps are listed as HD rather than the expected 4K resolution. Uh, based on some comments in the forums and on the Apple support community members, and as well as Reddit, uh, the issue can be found on native Apple content access through the iTunes movie and TV show apps, but not the main TV app, while a video on third-party services like HBO Max and Netflix is also affected. So... So the possibility is HDMI cables could uh, have something to do with it, as it already has been ruled, but, mm. but has been ruled out. But as uh, some users simply replace their previous gen Apple TV 4Ks with the newer set top set top box using the same cables, the older models doesn't exhibit the same problem. So, hmm, That's interesting to see where this is going to go. And they're, 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 they said the problem can be replicated in TVOS 14.6 and in the latest TVOS uh, 14.7 beta. So. So, so it's I think, still, I think still, it's a it's, still it's horrible. I, I, yeah, it's it's terrible. I think uh, people should return their Apple TVs, and Apple is doomed. Because yeah, you know that's true. This, yeah, this clearly. doesn't seem like this doomed. is not a huge deal. Um, to be honest with you, but yeah, no. But you know, people have to, to find be uh, have ticklers with us uh, with this uh, with this kind of stuff. And uh, oh my God, it says HD. I mean, and, and, you know, the normal human can probably not even tell the difference. I mean, that's why I kept my HD and I kept my old 4K. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be going run out and updating uh, my Apple TVs anytime soon because they, 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 they work perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. Just like the, uh, the lossless audio, I can't really tell the difference between right. HD and, and 4K and lossless, you know, just give me my, you know, put it tablet in front of my face with any kind of headphones but I'm, I'm good to go. Well, to be fair, Warren, you're almost 50. That I know. Things uh, things don't matter. Like, maybe when I was 20, I would definitely want that 4K. But, well, actually, the 4K is good because I can't see anymore. Um, you know, turning 50, I, you know, I need, I need, I need everything as big as possible. Absolutely. Um, so, and then uh, another story about the Apple TV, uh, our friends at iFixit uh, did a nice teardown, as they always do, and a lot of great stuff, and uh, it shows that it's very easy to repair the Apple TV, but the Siri remote battery, very difficult to replace, as the teardown shows. Uh, I, iFixit has uh, released that sec- that teardown here with a video, um, and as with pro- previous Apple TV models, the entire plastic shell of the device is transparent to uh, IR light, allowing the Siri the remote to be used at any angle, and the large fan inside the Apple TVs uh, is not connected with a cable to the logic board using four metal contacts, but instead makes makes disassembly even easier. Um, and I nice. and I, I like I said I know uh, I I I fix it's awesome. If you ever want to see what's inside of your of your devices, uh, you go to their website. They're the best, and they have the best tools too. Um, and then they told they also said the Siri remote. The battery is located in the bottom half, of, with the circuitry taking up the top half. And to get inside, two screws have to be removed from a panel on the bottom and of the remote where the lightning uh, port is located. But iFixit found that it's not possible to access anything meaningful here without removing even more screws elsewhere. So uh, I could say, don't bother. <laughs> what do you think, Jeff? I think that uh, the Apple TV remote, like every Apple TV remote before, it is ultimately a disposable product. Like that one? Ooh. Yeah, that one right there. And uh, they're not devices that I have ever expected to be yeah. user repairable, uh, which which is unfortunate. But there you go. But hearing that the Apple TV is uh, is easy to work on, okay, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It even says in here the click pad and the buttons had to be removed with brute force. <laughs> so that does not reason why don't take it apart. <laughs> it's not working. Yeah, don't don't take it apart. Any thoughts, Warren? I'll, I'll keep this in mind next time I try to fix a remote uh, yeah. rather than just throwing it away. Uh, yeah, I've never, uh, I've never opened up. I, I fix a lot of computers, a lot of electronics. I yeah, have never too. had to need or want to actually fix a remote control, and uh, this will continue to trend. But that's why we have iFixit to get us the answers. So that's right. 
All right, uh, let's move on to the topics this week. Uh, uh, as mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, and I'm sure I hope everybody has upgraded at this point, uh, iOS 14.6 was released earlier this week as we record this, May 24th to be exact, uh, and it was released to the public. Uh, and the update isn't as significant as 14.5 was because that preceded it, because, of course, 14.5 added the privacy stuff, uh, but still introduced a number of notable new features. And um, some of the highlights that would be included, of course, we just talked about it, the lossless and, and spatial audio support that's introduced in Apple Music. I don't think we have to talk too much more about that, um, but uh, Apple Music is going to show wh- whether it's Apple Digital Master or it's going to be lossless or if it's Dolby Atmos, and it'll be identified with the logos related to that. Um and the Apple's entire catalog is going to have that option, as we said. Um, and this, and uh, the other thing that they did is they expanded on the Apple Card. The Apple Card family is going to be designed to now allow an Apple Card to be shared among your family members. So if you have uh, others in your in your family, um, apparently you put your social security number in, and they can, and they can build up their credit uh, if you so choose. Um, it's, and, uh, uh, acting as a co-owner um, and that's also like parents uh, to share the card with their children to make purchases and just giving them limits so uh, that's actually smart it, you know, but really good, I better put a big limit on it because they might be buying lots of stuff here uh, but the, the co-owners have to be 18 years or older so that's, and, and, and they'll have a combined spending limit and the ability to see each other's spending so I think I'm gonna keep my Apple card separate like we've I've been doing with the wife. So I need to see what I'm spending and her spending. So <laughs> well, if you want to buy a present for each other. Exactly, that too. It can't you be secret. Want, you don't want them seeing the purchase. Exactly. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Lord, I would love to be a fly on the wall in your house. Yeah, I'd be too. Uh, it's not that exciting. So, and they also saw, there's also mentioned that the result, uh, uh, if they have two cards, uh, it's going to result in a higher, uh, shared credit limit, but, and with the lower APR of the two accounts will be added to that account. Uh, but they have, aren't going to release that feature until July. So, so for right now, you can't merge your accounts, uh, but, uh, yeah, good, some, some enhancements for the Apple Card. Yes, and uh, Apple Podcasts uh, subscription support. Uh, uh, they added that to the the podcast app, uh, so allowing our uh, us podcast creators be able to uh, collect subscription fees for their listeners. I, if I'm gonna if, if I do this, it'll be another story. I don't know if I will, um, but uh, it's uh, definitely going to be interesting to see what 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 people are going to be doing. It looks like uh, like NPR, Los Angeles Times, Sony Music, and Wondery are planning to do some premium content. Um, it'll be available in 170 countries. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? I, 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 this is going to be interesting to see where that goes, huh? It'll be interesting. Um, yeah, because you have a lot of uh, of content creators that are already doing premium content outside of the Apple ecosystem. So if they decide to add this in, now they have to maintain two right. premium feeds. Uh, feeds, which, I mean, it doesn't have to be a big issue, but it can be a big issue. Um, but still, I mean, just the whole thing with making it easy for content creators to to start adding premium content just right in Apple's ecosystem that is pretty cool. I, I, I think yeah. this is going to make premium content a lot more accessible to uh, to podcasters that may not have the resources that some of the big players do. Yep, for sure. Um, and then uh, AirTag and Find My, uh, the, of course, they added that in 14.5, but now in the Find My app, you're going to be able to put um, an email address in loss mode. So if... Um, uh, so when it's in loss mode, the AirTag, you, you can now add that email address for contact purposes. Prior to that, uh, the only option was just to enter a phone number. So they added that. Um, and so my YouTube also, videos already out of date. Great. Uh, yeah. You're going to have to, yeah, you have to do some edit there. AirTag, uh, AirTags will also show a partially masked phone number of the owner when tapped, uh, in with an NFC compatible device. Mm-hmm. Uh, the voice control, and we were talking about this last week, uh, Jeff, uh, about the, uh, all the new accessibility features that were just added. Uh, I haven't even tried this yet. I want to try this. Uh, that, uh, 
the uh, voice control accessibility option, once it is enabled, can now unlock your iPhone for the first time after a restart using only their voice after installing 14.6. I got to try that. That's so cool. I don't know if you've tried that yet. So um, I, I haven't had a chance yet. Me either. So we'll, we'll, we'll report back. <laughs> uh, and then some bug fixes, which, which you kind of expect uh, well, with any uh, release. Uh, unlock with Apple Watch may not work after uh, lock, lock iPhone on Apple Watch. They've, they've, uh, up, they've fixed some bugs with that. Reminders may appear as blank lines. Call, uh, call blocking extensions may not appear in settings. Bluetooth devices can could sometimes disconnect or send audio to a different device during an active uh, call. Oh, well, I could expect that, which is what I have in my AirPods here. Uh, uh, and I, iPhone may experience reduced performance during startup, so they fixed all those bugs. So, uh, so good bug bug roundup of fixes. Uh, definitely recommend uh, going out uh, and doing your updates, but. We know Warren is already on beta 14.7. So if we talk about 14.7 uh, beta that, that was released actually on the 19th, so it was a week uh, a week ago, there's no 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 new changes from, from what I can see. Uh, wouldn't you say that as well, Warren? Um, no, I don't see much uh, changed. And uh, with uh, WWDC coming up soon, yep. I don't think there's going to be much more exciting changes coming. Yeah, I'm thinking this is this is probably the end of the road for uh, for 14 as far as as far as new features now. Yeah, it's just going to be bug fixes, I bet. Um, mm-hmm. the, but but they will be a surprise before they've had concurrent versions of updates going on at the same time. A lot of times, at least the last uh, few updates mm-hmm. there have been so. updates, but not really feature updates. Like uh, the yeah. feature updates come up with the big ones. It's, it's at this point. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> All right, so that's 14.6. Go out, get it. You're going to have, uh, you'll probably be happier and there won't be as, as many problems here. But uh, we're going to go on and actually move on and talk about the iPad Pro. The iPad Pros were, were shipped out to everybody out in the last week or so. And uh, both uh, Warren and I have gotten our, have received our iPad Pros. I have the 11 inch and 256 gigabytes uh, iPad Pro. And uh, Warren has the, uh, 12.9 inch right uh, and you got the the golden one there um which one did you get it's uh 256 uh i i think i put a case on it before i even know what color it was i just picked, because they're hard to get so i just picked one um i think it might be space gray but i don't feel like taking the case off right now to, to figure that out uh but it's two, 256 gig uh 12.9 excellent that's interesting um, and, and, um, I, I'm curious. What, why did both of you go with 256? That's my thought, that's my good number. It, it fits all yeah. my pictures. It it's fits funny. all my pictures and uh, my music. If I want to do that, uh, I've run out of space with 128. I haven't went 256 yet. Yeah, but I've always had 256 for the last three I've had. So and it's always been more than sufficient space space wise for me. Um, so. But uh, I, uh, luckily, I was able to uh, spend some time with both the 2018 model before I shipped it back to Apple. Actually, just shipped it back yesterday, and uh, and the uh, the 2021 model that I have now with M1, the M1. And uh, I did, of course, you have to do some geek benching. So I geek benched uh, the, the the model here, and uh, I do notice a substantial difference in performance uh jump uh between the, uh, the two um i did a i, I did a geek, geek bench score through uh, and, and a compute and uh the metal score for the the uh the m1 uh ipad pro was uh, 20 to 21,110 and and you went down to the uh the geek bench score of the the ipad pro with the a12x bionic it was down to 11 133 so it did have a pretty good jump in in performance. Um, I do notice this. It it it, it is zippy. I mean, I do notice the the, uh, the 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 speeds. It's it's much more quick in reaction the way you're getting into the apps. Um, I do. I uh, the other thing I do. I I totally notice difference in the screen. Even though the 11 inch doesn't have the XDR like the 12.9 one does. Comparing those two, there was just no no comparison. This this one is some far superior with with a much more crisper image than the uh, the previous model. So, and Noah, what about you, Warren? What what, what are some of the things that stood out for you uh, with the twelve point nine? I didn't do any benchmarks, but the speed. I mean, it, it seems better. I mean, I yeah. think if 
you threw a 2008 uh 2018 in front of me and and, and, a, and a 2021 and, and didn't tell me which one was which i may not know the difference because the 2008 and mm-hmm. 2020s are fast uh, and i never noticed them not being fast um you know obviously i noticed the the difference in screen size and i'm hoping uh some spouses don't notice that um <laughs> <laughs> i also in your, in your bank account <laughs> no, not that one. Um, so I um, I noticed the screen size. Um, the screen looks nice. It's much. Uh, oh, yeah. it, it's nice. I mean, it's 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 hard to know how much nicer it is in like the eleven inch or or the non OLED or mini LED or whatever it is. Um, but I put out a black uh, wallpaper, you know, just to see how it looks, and it looks pretty good. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you know, I, I want to find a good use for it because it's it's a beautiful piece of machine. Oh, it really is. Um, what what have you? I know Jeff, you don't have a new iPad just yet, but uh, what what have been impressions of what you've been? Uh, what, what impressions you've had so far? Uh, what you've been reading and, and hearing? Well, obviously, you're hearing new stuff from us, but uh, maybe any, any any thoughts on the iPad Pro, and maybe you might think about getting it. Of course, I'm thinking about getting getting one. Excuse me. The the reason I didn't get one is because the big thing for me is that the iPad Pro is my workhorse uh, away from my desk machine. Yeah. Which is funny to say because I have a 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro sitting here on the desk right now, and uh, and it does leave the desk, but uh, but I tend to use the iPad away from the desk more. Mm-hmm. So if I if I was going out places or traveling a lot, I think that I'd have a brand new iPad Pro sitting on my desk right now. But as it stands, right. I just go to the living room and sit at the table and use my iPad there or on the couch. And um, and the videos that I'm creating right now, because that's actually mm-hmm. my video uh, editing machine. Mm-hmm. They're rendering very nicely on my current iPad pro. And, uh, and, and I have the one from right before LIDAR. So what is that? The 2019? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So, so that was 2018, right before LIDAR was 20, 2018. Okay. Yeah. So 2018. So that's what I the have. Ones, the ones we both had. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah. traded it. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We sold. And, uh, and it's rendering video just fine. And I, I can do everything I need in Luma fusion without feeling like, like I'm hitting a, uh, a productivity roadblock. So yeah, there's that, but oh, that new screen is very enticing. It is. And I'm, I'm happy yeah. with the 11. I mean, I know that I know the XDR on the 12.9, as Warren says, is, is pretty, pretty nice. It's nice. But I, I like the size. I've always liked the 11 inch size screen. Uh, no, me and, too. Uh, that's why I stuck with it. I'm more excited about what what could be happening with uh, iPad OS because I right. mean, if you know, mm-hmm. if you're running Luma Fusion on a 2018 iPad with the old chip, and you don't notice uh, ID problems, it's it's not gonna. There's nothing out there that's gonna be taking advantage of of this one either because the old you know the old iPad ran everything perfectly. Um, so hopefully, you know, developers start making more intense programs maybe made specifically for the uh, m1 uh ipad that can't run in older ones mm-hmm. or um maybe uh you know i uh I, they'll do a little bit more um mac like integration in wwc and you know make it more like a computer especially with the trackpad and, and the keyboard and you know have a little more options of uh you know multitasking and um and uh, you know, file the file system is still wanky um, on it. You can still get to it, but it's you know, it's not like a it's not like a Mac. So I mean, if it gets to that point, then you know, if you have a second almost real computer, it's nice. I I showed you a, a picture uh, on on Facebook, but I have mm-hmm. uh, jump desk jump desktop. It's basically like a Team Viewer, I guess, but it's a uh, it's a little bit right. better. Um, it's more for personal use and. I could, um, you know, I have my, you know, desktops at home, and I could, from anywhere with the internet, I could uh, jump onto one of those desktops and run Mac OS or Windows or whatever, um, 
and, and it looks great and it works great. And that's kind of the reason why I went to the 13 inch because you know, on the 11 inch, it was just too small to, to, to do that. And this is big enough to, uh, to see what I'm doing. So, um, yeah. you know, it's, 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 uh, you know, that's what I'm hoping, but it, so far it's, it's great. I love the size. Okay. Um, and, uh, there obviously been quite the debate about the, this iPad Pro being a pro, quote unquote, pro device because it doesn't have, you know, applications like Final Cut and, you know, Logic Pro and all of that stuff. But, you know, I think it's, it's there. We, we, we've, and Jeff and I, you've, we've talked about the, the apps like Ferrite and, and LumaFusion mm-hmm. being, you know, pretty, pr- pretty, pretty solid apps that are already working on the iPad pretty well. Um, but I, I mean, I, I don't think it's a game changer right now because I like like what Warren just said. I think the future of iPad OS is 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 coming. We're probably iPad OS fifteen, and which we're hoping when we hear in a couple weeks with WWDC uh, that we're going to see some more pro stuff on here uh, with mm-hmm. that, uh, which, I, which I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to. Yeah, a- Apple could come WWDC completely change where yeah. a new iPad fits in my priority list. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, well, I'm then, still uh, I'm still in the uh, return window in case iOS 15 is a bust. So, <laughs> yeah, but you don't have your your old iPad anymore, do you? No, no. But oh, I don't miss it that much, to be honest with you. I, you know, I guess I would get an iPad, uh, one of the three hundred dollar iPads, until something good came out with the iOS. At that point, what um, case? It, do you want to talk about cases? Yeah, well, let me let me just go get to the other feature that that they just added with iPad before we get to the cases here. Uh, the Thunderbolt uh, Thunderbolt is now supported with the, with the USB connector on there. So I've done, I did plug my 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 OWC Thunderbolt uh, uh, hub and it works just spectacular. It's really fast. Nice, giving some good 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 file transfers uh, with the SSD drives displays. Yeah, didn't do a try it on display, but uh, the because I don't have I don't have a. Um, the USB or Thunderbolt uh, style uh, displays just yet. So, uh, but uh, yeah, they, you definitely see some improvements there, and uh, and yeah, it, it it it's really a good thing here as far as uh, that improvement in itself. So, I, I I'm looking for the future. This this is definitely going to be an iPad I'll be hold down to for like I did the 2018. I had it for three years. So mm, I, never say that. Oh. I I always say that because you are the only one that I, I've, I've learned my lesson with. with 20, iPads, so they could really we don't know they could release an iPad next year that does like crazy stuff that you're like I, I you know I have to have it so one with a holographic display. Yeah, it's gonna okay. be holographic. It's gonna like you know transform. It's gonna like uh, you know you could you know make it bigger or smaller just by pulling on the sides. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, the cases that we work, I've got a couple links in the show notes, and uh, I don't know which case you went with, uh, Warren. You probably want to. Uh, I was going to go ahead and start with you. What, what, what was the case that you went with uh, for yours? I was waiting to get my hands on the uh, on the uh, Logitech one that Apple sells. Um, mm-hmm. It's a Logitech, uh, uh, and it's a. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's basically just the new one for the iPad. Um, and it's, it's really nice. Uh, I like the keyboard a little bit less than the, uh, the, the magic keyboard that I have, but mm-hmm. it's definitely, uh, it's definitely thinner and it's easier to carry, but it's still heavy. Um, to be honest with you. So you did you get know. that. You did get it. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I was able to. Um, and you know, so far so good. The one thing it doesn't do, which which I kind of miss, is uh, I'm on the Surface uh, uh, laptops with those. The, it, it's basically the same kind of keyboard, but uh, with the Surface laptops, you were able to raise the back of the keyboard by putting the magnet up, uh, so you have kind mm. of a, a slanted down angle. Uh, you can't do it, so it's basically really flat. Uh, to type on, so that's kind of annoying. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, so far so good. Gestures all work. Well, um, I would say I kept my Apple Magic keyboard, and it works perfectly. That didn't change. I know the Apple key- the Apple Magic keyboard for the twelve point nine inch. If you have the old version, um, the uh, there was a slight difference. I think 0.5 millimeters of, of of spacing, so it is going to not be perfect, but it does work. Um, 
I, I had two other cases. I had the Moft, uh, Moft. I don't know how you pronounce. I know you have that. Uh, you have this stuff. The, mm-hmm. the Moft stand and floating case, which is actually a pretty nice little case. Um, uh, I like the way it just floats out, and you can you can. You know, and I, I kind of interchange my cases. You know, if I don't want to have the keyboard, I'll, I'll I'll switch it over to the case uh, and use that one. Um, and that was I actually bought that, and we both bought that on during the, when they were on Kickstarter. So mm-hmm. um, so now they're out for sale. Now I believe that case is uh, like fifty four ninety nine. I believe that the cost on that one is. Um, and then the other case I really, really like was the Zugu, Z-U-G-U, the iPad case. And funny enough, I actually tried um, I, I actually tried putting it on the, the – the, I, I saw the old case, which was the old camera. It, it fits perfectly. And, and in fact – it really, all, other than blocking the uh, the the lidar uh, sensor on the camera and on how much time I'm going to spend, you know, using the camera with the with the iPad, you know, if I want to have that case, because the, the nice thing about that case is it folds over and it has the notches and you can go to different angles, uh, which I like a lot. Uh, and I, I I tend to have been leaning towards using that case. I may use it for a while. See, you know, see what I, I, I mean. Okay, so it's covering part of the camera. It's it really isn't because it still will take pictures because the two lenses are still visible through the smaller opening. Um, that uh, uh, I think that case will work fine. I have a link in the show notes to the new the new case. The new case isn't available yet, uh, so and I believe that case is like around fifty nine ninety nine. So uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a decent case. Uh, uh, but and I've got the Apple Pencil as well. You don't have the Apple Pencil, right, Warren? No, I had one uh, once and I never used it, so I never got one again. Yeah. So, uh, so I have that that goes along with it as well. So, but overall, I think I'm 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 pre- I'm pretty happy with the upgrade. I thought I was pretty happy to, that that I went through it. The uh, the, the trade in uh, went, went is it was very easy. You know, I just and then the nice thing about when you do the trade in with uh, with Apple. Um, when you buy it and uh, and you add the trade into it, they automatically give you the deduction of the cost. You don't have to wait until oh, nice. you actually receive it, you know, to to get the cash credit because you're using your Apple Card. Um, so, and if they find something that's wrong with it, which I know they won't, um, then they'll you know they'll deduct whatever the difference is, and they won't. I got four hundred fifty five dollars for it, so I think that was pretty fair for a three year old iPad. So, and it's still a perfectly good iPad. I know the battery was kind of starting to uh, go a little bit on it. There was it, it wasn't staying as uh, Staying charged as as long like this one, I'm still using it. I let it go all day here, and it's yeah, it's about sixty six percent on this one. So, um, so that was a good that was a good experience for me too as well. So, um, overall, like I said, I well, I, I'm pretty solid with this iPad, and I'm I'm looking forward to doing some more work on it and keeping it going here. So, did you have any other uh, thoughts on the iPad the pros and on that, Jeff? Uh, I I really like where where the iPad is headed. Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, and uh, we keep getting closer every year to my my dream setup, which is uh, I switch to a desktop only Mac and mm-hmm. an iPad Pro, and I can do everything I need on the iPad Pro. And we, we keep getting closer to the day yep. where where I feel like I can actually use my iPad Pro as a replacement for my MacBook Pro. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not there yet, but I, I, I can almost see that light at the end of that tunnel. Yeah, absolutely. It's getting, it's getting close. You know, one thing the iPad never did right, I don't think, is the Mail app is not as good as the the macOS Bell app, which I use a lot. Um, yeah. It's just much easier to manage. Yeah, I, I'm so. with you. There are some serious limitations. Yeah. Um, Yes. So, like, uh, what what if you want to uh, to have your digital key? You, you yeah. can't do encrypted yeah. email, right? Yeah. Right. And even just the viewing of it, like the unified mailbox uh, on the, uh, uh, you kind of have it here. But like, if you want to like delete in bulk, um, you know, junk mail, trash, things like that, it's a lot easier on the Mac than it is on my iOS device. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the other topic I want to hit on, but long as long as we're still talking about iPad, here's the Apple Pencil um, and how we use it. Uh, I'm I, I find I like the Apple Pencil. I, I find it, it easier to, to 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 actually do any writing. I, I I like the the fact that on the Notes app where you can you can actually do writing. And we talked about this on I believe on Mac Voices uh, the other night uh, that we were just talking about this with uh, using uh, Notability and Good Notes and, mm-hmm. and Notes on on and the and the capability because you know, Kelly 
Kelly Gamont brought it up. You know, that, that she, she's not thinking about getting a pencil now because she now has the new iPad. So, um, but uh, uh, Jeff, you, uh, you, I know you're an artist. You like using the, the Apple Pencil for that reason. And uh, what, what are kind of the things that you do to use the uh, the Apple Pencil with it? Uh, with it. Uh, but besides art, I, I write with it a lot, and um, uh, that that would be primarily in in like note taking applications where it makes more sense that I'd be using a stylus because I'm probably doing other things at the same time besides just making words happen. So uh, mm -hmm. using Apple Pencil is much easier for that. And I have found that at times it is, it, it's actually a really nice pointing device on my iPad. Yeah. I agree. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I use it not exclusively, but, but a lot in LumaFusion. Some, some of the controls for, uh, working with your video content are really tiny. And if you tap in the wrong place, you may just undo all the, all the work you just did. So I end up using an Apple pencil for, for yes. tapping all this. Look, I, plus, I'm just sitting here holding it. I just realized plus, 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 you know, finger smudges. Yeah. Yeah. You get the smudges. That's, that's true. That's, you don't get the smudges. Biggest, that's why we do it. Uh, I use a uh, stylus when I can, because uh, that thing is just a smudge magnet. I do clean my my iPhone or iPad screen a lot. So do I. Yep. In fact, outside my uh, door right now, there's a, a screen protector for it. Amazon just dropped it off. So I'm going to pop nice. one on. Uh, actually, I'm going to see if I can because I don't know if it's going to fit with the uh, the Logitech case because uh, it's very yeah. tight around it. So I don't know if it's going to work, but it was cheap. So we'll see how it goes. I think another cool thing too is that the, the iPad's ready to go when uh, when you want to take notes because as soon as I go to my iPad and I and I tap the screen it automatically brings up the notes app and I can start writing a note and you know it automatically translates your uh -huh. your writing right away so as, you know, as soon as you as soon as you you you, you put in something it's going to be able to, to for the most part to decode what you write uh, which and, and the notes app is pretty accurate I know a lot a lot a lot of people are big huge fans of the notes app I'm a big notes uh, the Apple notes app uh, user uh, for both on the Mac and uh, iOS and I and iPad OS and uh, yeah that's kind of cool it does that uh, and, and, it, and it's it's very uh, easy to do um, and they even have added a lot of things like features like taking screenshots with your uh, with the, with the pencil you don't have to you know do the the, the power and the and the volume up button to do it you can you can get it enabled real easy you know with with the the pencil so so it's really come a long way i think from the first one i definitely like this second generation i the pencil compared to the first gen which was that ridiculous having to put it yeah in the yeah first connector. generation and it didn't roll yeah. off it didn't roll off the table it doesn't roll because it's got it yeah i mean i'm That's good at true. dropping this thing all the time because it slips yeah. out of my hands a lot of times but and you don't have to worry about losing this i'm probably one of the only yeah. people in the world that actually still has the the end cap for a first yeah. gen apple pencil so uh so consider consider uh, getting the pencil if you have uh if you have an ipad i, I think we uh, jeff and i for sure will recommend it uh for 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 good use and uh, warren you, you didn't like it so much so uh, no, I'm, but, I'm, from, I'm uh, artistically challenged and my handwriting is uh, terrible. That's the reason why yeah. I'm in computers, so I don't have to write anymore. So, um, yeah, this is not for me. It's, it's not my jam. Yeah. Um, all right. So then uh, uh, let's uh, let's go move on and talk a little bit about the uh, the the. Apple TV's Siri, Siri, new Siri remote, which I, I like bringing this up in my face here. And look at that. Okay, I got this uh, as I shown on camera here. Um, it's uh, interesting to say the least. Um, it's going to take a little getting used to. I, I got so used to the first gen Siri remote that, uh, with the touch, with the touchpad on it, uh, that it, it, it's going to take a little bit of time of getting, uh, getting used to it. Um, it, it did took a little time to sync it. Oh, at first times I, you have to push the power button on here to get it to sync. And I still haven't spent a lot of time as far as, is it working with the power for the TV uh, when you want to turn it on? And, uh, and I believe there's also we won't have time to talk about that today, but uh, there's ways of getting it to work with your um, with your home theater uh, receiver too. Um, but uh, 
I can tell you that the t- that the, the, the the touchpad's very similar to what the uh, uh, way the old iPod was many years ago, um, and the, the center part of the of that, of that uh, touch is is uh, is really nice. Um, volume controls and it's res- it's responsive. I mean, I think it's it, it, it's it's got nice heavy feeling to it, so it's uh, so it uh, really does just feel solid compared to the other uh, uh, other remotes. Of course, I've got the, uh, the the function one around remote, but does that one? Of course, doesn't have any Siri capabilities. So they put Siri, on, you know, the button on the side instead of it being, you know, uh, say you're having to hold down a button, you just push the the, the Siri button itself. It's got its own dedicated button uh, to get uh, Siri to enable, um, and uh, it. it uh, uh, and I do have an article in, in, in the, actually in the show notes talking about how to, to, to get uh, you controlling your TV and receiver and goes through the steps here uh, as well. Uh, but uh, it does it. Um, I'm, I'm happy with it. I, I mean, again, it's 50, it's 60 bucks to, to, to buy it, just the remote itself. So it's, you know, a little pricey, uh, but I wanted to give it, I've got a shot and then try it. And I don't think it's going to be as hard to lose. Although some people are already, I think uh, I, I think someone had already created a uh, uh, 3D print, uh, 3D printing uh, case for it, so you could put an air tag in, inside that case uh, for this this remote. But uh, I saw that. It, it it does definitely has some weight to it, and and um, I, I like that because you know holding remotes, you know you don't, you, you want to have some you know have a, a good feeling with it and and see how it goes. So, but uh, overall, I'm, I've been pretty pretty pleased with it. So um, it uh, you know, I know you guys haven't uh, haven't. Uh, uh, jumped on the bandwagon yes just yet with the remote or a new apple tv for that matter um so no, any, any I'm thoughts s- i'm still on my hd uh right now so yeah. i've got an hd one room and an old uh, the um the original 4k in the in the other the two rooms and i don't even have 4k tv so it's kind of pointless to have a 4k uh apple tv so it's tempting yeah. with the uh with the uh output uh to the home pods uh with the Dolby Atmos, yep. is that what it is? So, I mean, that, mm-hmm. that would probably be the only reason I would do it if I was going to do it. Yeah. And, you know, as far as getting the remote goes, I think the new remote is very compelling. Yeah. But I have a Harmony Elite. Right. <laughs> and well, for now, for now, you have a Harmony. For now, right. <clears throat> yeah. Well, as, as long as, as, uh, Logitech or who owns them now? Is it still Logitech? Logitech, yeah, yeah but they're not they're not making them anymore. So. They're, they're not making yeah, they're, them anymore. But the life. they have to support. But the, them. but the yeah, the back end still works. Yeah. So what I'm hoping is that if uh, if they decide to shut down the back end, they'll do like Pebble did, where they let another company just like you know, like an open source group take it over. Yeah, I have the the hub, the Harmony hub. Um, Yep. And their remote, which uh, it was one of the first things that worked really well with uh, Alexa. Um, it just got a TV turned on when you wanted to. You could change the channels with voice. Um, and, um, you know, I constantly use my phone um, as a remote for, for the, that's the only way I control my TV is basically through the Harmony app on my, on my phone, which is uh, perfect because it's always with me. Um, you know, when my wife falls asleep on the other remote, I, I have a remote to turn it off, uh, with, um, but yeah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy with what I have, but again, if, if, uh, the 4k, uh, Apple TV and the new remote might be my future. If I decide to play around with the Atmos, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely, uh, 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 see, see where it goes when it comes to that. So, um, but, uh, I, I I did did notice I, I, that the that the remote settings um, when you get into it in the Apple TV it does give you some flexibility of, of of changing it the way the way it responds and of course now that it has a power button to to control you know components I still haven't had I had a chance to spend the time I the, the article in the show notes from Nine to Five Mac is going to give you some a bit, a bit of a guide but uh, I thought it was a uh, it was a uh, it was a good compelling reason to have uh, this remote uh, you kind of try to sell. Sort of, are you going to try to sell the old one? Yeah. No. no he's remote. trying to find it. It's in his couch somewhere, probably. The old yeah. remote that came with your Apple TV. No, it's obviously nice. It. It's a collector's item. Yeah, the old, old one. You could compare it. Uh, oh, the, the, it the super old. I have like four of them laying around my house. and like The little I, white I one. 
the little yeah, well, the, no, the, one, the yeah. silver ones. The, yeah, the the silver ones that uh, were between. I don't. I have. I don't have the Apple TVs, but I have the remote silver. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and then uh, there was an article here talking about Apple TV a little bit. Uh, now I think about it. Uh, this is a, this article from Mac, Mac Rumors uh, it was how to stream audio from your TV's input to the HomePod because um, the new second generation Apple TV uh, 4K is capable of relaying audio from a compatible TV to the HomePod, even if you're not using the Apple TV. So this allows you to stream audio from a TV connected game console or other set top box straight to Apple's smart speakers. Uh, and then uh, they go through a whole setup process here, being able to do that. Uh, uh, and you can go into the Apple TV app, uh, Apple TV settings uh, app, and then go to video and audio, and you can select the default audio output, and it does give you the option going through uh, play a television audio on uh, the eARC uh, is the uh, is the set or the or the arc um, for the different types of settings. Um, and uh, uh, I believe this was is this is an iOS uh, a tvOS fourteen dot six that you could do this. Uh, but it does give you uh, some more capabilities. Uh, so they are doing some expansion, which I'm, I'm excited to see. The, the remote started, and as well as uh, you know, some other stuff on the new Apple TV uh, that that's out there as well. You know that that uh, audio feature sure would sure would have been nice to have, say, like a year ago when Apple was yeah. uh, still trying to sell the big HomePod. Yeah. And actually, that's uh, reason number two why I might get the, fourth, the new one, because uh, very rarely do I watch TV through the Apple TV. I watch it through TV, um, the cable box yeah. or whatever. So I would, I, I've always wanted to be able to output um, the regular TV out to uh, the HomePod. So that's compelling, to say the least. That's only with the new yep. one. It only works with the brand new one, right? Right. Yep. It's a second okay. gen, right? Yeah. Second gen 4K. So, um, one thing I forgot to mention earlier about 14.6, I wanted to make sure I mentioned here, um, the Apple watch, the series three, if you're owner of a series three Apple watch, which is pretty old at this point, um, and for on using 14.6 and then watch 7.5, the, the, uh, Folks who update oh, update their device to the new version of the okay. Apple uh, Watch OS are prompted to unpair and repair the Apple Watch uh, from the iPhone during the update process because storage space constraints. It's just, say, re- that, it's just a return your watch and buy a new one instead. Yeah, and that's basically what I'm saying is <laughs> the Series Three is kind of you know a little, little thin here uh, with the with uh, being able to handle that. So uh, I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that uh, that it's. Uh, uh, Apple did recommend this. They're actually recommending that you unpair and repair the Apple the Series Three, who are, are having uh, issues here. So that, right, that's, I've got two that's, thoughts that's, on that. Yeah, I've had, the first I've had one to do is, that already. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah was, uh, holy crap! Seriously, you have to you have to essentially factory reset your watch to be able to put an update on it. But the other thought is, holy crap, Apple is supporting a device that's old enough that they have to give you a workaround to actually install the operating system. Who else is doing that? Right. They could have easily said it's not supported anymore and not put the update on. The, the they could have, but, yeah. but instead they're saying, Hey, you can do it. If you're having a problem, here's the workaround. My friend has either three or four. And even before all this, I've had a, I've had a, uh, do this because he didn't have the space on it, even though there was not, there was no music on it. Um, he had nothing on it, but there was not enough room for the update. So I had to, uh, I had to unpair it, reset it, and then do the update and then pair it back up. So, yeah. Yeah. So I was very surprised to see that this is not, that's not, that's not typical Apple usually, uh, but you know, they're, they're con- they continue to support older devices like this with the lack of space. I mean, I guess it it it, it, it kind of makes sense that uh, uh, this is uh, something that uh, they could expect to do um, to, to get it to work. So to keep keep the customer happy. I guess that's what it is, right? Buy a new yeah. watch. It's old. Yeah, it's get, very old. Get the SE. What's what's uh, the cheap one now? Is it the, the SE. SE? Yeah, get SE. the SE. Yeah, it's probably uh, it's probably time. Yeah, get it. Definitely. Get it. Get it. Time. It's probably time. Get get get. 
Yeah, uh, we weren't saying anything, Warren, because we were afraid that uh, we'd only encourage you. <laughs> that was an, that was an unintentional joke, by the way. But go ahead, go ahead, encourage yeah, me. I don't think we have to encourage encourage Warren to buy new things because we tease him all the time. No, I'm telling other people. Guys. I'm telling other people to buy new things. It's a little different. But they aren't going to listen to you because they only buy them when they want them when they really need them. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Not, only stupid people. Every every smart people buys the new ones just because of the oh. fear of there's this FOMO of not having that new thing. <laughs> All right, I think we come to, to a close of this episode. Let's go ahead and wrap things up here for this week. That's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. You can uh, subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others. But better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where you uh, will find all the links to all the ways to listen to us. They are there. Are there. I am your host, Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And uh, Jeff Gamma, thanks as always for being here. Where can everybody find you? Uh, thanks again for inviting me on. I seriously just have so much fun with both of you. Uh, but I'm easy to find. Jay Gamut, Twitter and Instagram, and uh, uh, YouTube.com slash Jay Gamut for my videos. And uh, Tuesdays, uh, Mac Voice is live. Thursday afternoons is the big show. And then Friday mornings is the Mac show. And uh, and then sometimes here, I kind of get around. You do. And we, and we always love having you here. So thanks for being here. Uh, Mr. Warren Sklar, where can people find you? Yeah, I'm on the internet somewhere, but I usually use this time to just say uh, thanks to the guests. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, it's always fun to, to have you. Um, and, you know, I never know who's coming up because Dave sends out an email to uh, to me and then I have to look at the CC or to, to who else is on that list. And I got excited. I saw your name. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a good night. Well, and, I, and I was glad that uh, you're going to be on because that meant you're back in town. Sure. I am. So, yep. So when I'm not in Vegas, you can find me on the Internet. If, if you and really of course, find me. Of course, Mac to the Future Facebook group. But make sure you go out there and join that up. We've got the link in, link in the... In, in your uh, bio to so come uh, join us we have a lot of yeah. fun out there people are excited they got their new toys and they're talking about it and some of them are asking questions because they want to buy the new toys and it's a, it's a fun place to hang out yes sure is but all right well everybody thanks for listening i hope you enjoyed the show we enjoyed uh, uh doing it and uh we'll talk again soon